Hey everyone, Effie here. I'm finally getting around to posting this video created using our Daisy Duet stamp set released during our fabulous anniversary release. So I started off by rose gold heat embossing this large image from our Daisy Duet set onto an A2 size watercolor panel. I'm using Canton XL 140 pound paper that I cut down to A2 size, which is four and a quarter by five and a half. I covered my entire panel with this large image. And to do so, I used a bit of masking. So I created my mask using the coordinating die for the Daisy Duet and some temporary adhesive paper. Uh, and I created the mask using printer paper. So what I did was I stamped the Daisy Duet first at the bottom portion of my panel, and then I embossed it. Uh, after I heat set the uh, embossing powder, I covered it up with the mask, and I stamped the Daisy Duet again spooned on the embossing powder, peeled off the mask, and I melted the embossing powder, and then I just repeated this process until I covered the entire panel with these images. It's important to peel off that mask before you apply your heat tool to your panel, otherwise you're gonna get kind of a squishy mess. Don't ask me how I know. This is just one tip uh, when you're creating a pattern like this using one stamp. So after I finish embossing, I'm going to do some water coloring and I'm using my Ken Oliver color burst. I'm using a combination of my Marigold color burst and I believe it's a lemon yellow color burst or a zest by the Brutus Mineral and Ken Oliver collaboration. I can't remember which yellow I use, but the two are uh, similar in that they're really gorgeous and bright yellows. So uh, either one will work. I'm using two Pentel Aqua brushes to paint today. I have a fine tip brush that I'm using to apply pigment, and then I have a medium or large water brush to help me apply clean water and also to blend all my color out. So I start off by applying clean water to the areas that I wanna paint first using the larger water brush. And then I take my fine tip brush and I dip it into my color burst powders, which are already pre-squeezed in my color palette that you see on the left. After I've gotten a little bit of pigment on that fine tip brush, I will apply a little bit of pigment into the areas on my watercolor paper. Then I'll take that larger brush, which is clean, it has no pigment on it, and I'll just blend that color out using that larger brush. This is the same technique that I use for the yellow and the marigold today, but I did start off by adding a base layer of color with my uh, lemon yellow or zest color burst. After I, I blended that lemon yellow out to cover most of the floral or the daisy, I will then add a little bit of marigold to the inner portions of my petals. Then I'll blend that marigold out to about halfway or three quarters out of the way towards the outer portions of the petals. Now this is the first layer of marigold. I really add the marigold in two layers. The first layer is the lighter layer where I'm just putting down the base color similar to what I did for the yellow. But after the first layer of marigold, after I blended that first layer out just a little bit, I'll add another more intense layer of marigold just to the inner portions of the petal. I'm not going to go up as high as I did for the first layer of marigold because I don't want there to be too much of this marigold color. I just want there to be a little bit in the corners for a little bit of contrast. When I watercolor, I want there to be different shades of the colors that I'm using, including uh, the white of the paper. So just one tip when you're watercoloring that base yellow layer, don't go up all the way with the yellow. Leave a little bit of white areas, uh, maybe at the tips of your petals, and this is going to kind of give you that extra color. It's going to give you the highlights uh, in your florals that will kind of give it that extra oomph to your painting. So you'll have that base layer of yellow, you'll have the white highlights, you'll have the base layer of marigold, and then you'll have the darker marigold in just the corners of your petals. And this is, you get all this color variation from just two paints, the yellow and the marigold color burst. So you don't need a lot of colors for 
big impact in your painting. You just have to know how to use the pigments to the best of their ability. Try using different uh, intensities of each color to get different hues and shades. To experiment, try using different amounts of water on your brush tip. The more water you use, you're gonna get a lighter color. The less water you use, you're gonna get a more intense color. I always have a piece of paper towel next to me when I watercolor. If I have too much water on the brush, I will just dab the brush tip on the paper towel to dry it a little bit. If I need more water, I'll just squeeze the chamber from my Pentel Aqua brush to release a little bit of water. So I just go back and forth from paper to paper towel to help control that water flow. Next, I'm gonna take the thank you dies from our Bold General Greetings die set. Uh, this is a great die set to have in your collection because it features uh, different all occasion sentiments in this beautiful, bold font. So I die cut the thank you from regular white cardstock. After I ran that through my die cut machine, I took the large die from our double stitch rectangles uh, small set and I die cut my watercolored panel, and I'm just gonna use the inner panel. I just kind of tossed the outer border away. Next, I adhered my panel onto my side folding A2 card base using some really strong double-sided adhesive. Our strong double-sided adhesive sheets uh, come in sheets, which I just cut down to strips, and then I applied those strips behind my panel and then I just take the protective backing off and then apply the panel onto my side folding base. Next, I use the negative portions of my die cut sentiment to help me with my placement for my die cut letters. This is a great tip to make sure that your letters are centered and straight. So I popped up all of my die cut letters using tiny foam squares then I added to my sentiment by taking this For Everything stamp from our Peony Notes bundle stamp set. I just white heat embossed this stamp onto black cardstock, and then I cut that sentiment strip out and I popped it up right between my thank you sentiment. By using the black cardstock for this portion of the sentiment, it's just gonna kind of break up my entire card panel. It's just gonna add a little bit of interest to the card. After I popped up the sentiment strip, I trimmed away the excess and I added more uh, foam tape under the areas that need more support. Then I added some of our clear rhinestones onto my panel for embellishments. Our clear rhinestones are really gorgeous because they're totally see-through and they take on whatever color you adhere them onto. Unlike our clear dewdrops, our rhinestones have a faceted uh, surface on them, but they're just as gorgeous in getting that dewy look to your projects. So that's it for today's video. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.